Hey, 11 the last part of our topic here on algebra, and we are looking at completing the square now. Hopefully, as I promised, this will be a bit easier than some of the things we've done before. Right, I think this is pretty good. There are a couple of ways of looking at it. Um, what we come down, what we end up doing is, sorry, I wrote some stuff here before, is we rely on this property that if I have a plus b all squared, we expand that and they get square the first, twice their product, square the last. Now, let's look at this and say I take a b squared away from both sides, and then, and I'm actually swapping left and right, a squared plus 2ab equals a plus b all squared minus b squared. Now, we often have this kind of thing, a squared term and like an x, to, x squared and an x. And it's helpful sometimes to write things in this square, in this, um, in this kind of form here where, you know what's happening here? I have a square minus a square. Have we seen that somewhere else? Of course, it's a difference of two squares, and we'll use that property sometimes. Now, we just asked to complete the square here. This is a bit of an unusual kind of thing. This is not really an exam sort of thing, because we are asked to put in whatever number here suits us to make it nice and neat and tidy. Well, if I, what you need to remember to do is to halve the, num the coefficient of x. So I've got 16 here, halve it. I get 8, so x plus 8, all squared. Halve it and square it. Right, so that's what we call a perfect square because this is the square of half of this. Same thing goes here. Half negative 3, it's negative 3 over 2 or negative 1 and a half. Square that, I always get a positive when I square it, 9 over 4. This is our perfect square. So if it were written like this, x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4, you could go, hey, I know what, that's a perfect square. I can express it as x minus 3 over 2 all squared. It's a strange way to do maths, really, where you make up numbers that uh, make this make this nice and neat and tidy. Right? What's more likely to happen is we're given an expression and we express it in that way. Right? Now there are good reasons that we'll come to another time uh, for why we might want to express this as squares. Right? Not just straight out with factors, but we are going to solve. That means we're going to find the value of t here. Right? We're going to do this two different ways. First way, I want to do this using a difference of two squares. So, t squared plus 8t equals 20. Take the coefficient of the, um, the single power, right? So the t, half it. So I get t plus 4 all squared. Right, there's my first square. Now that's going to introduce a 16, so I want to take 16 away there as well. It equals 20. If I expand this out, I get t squared plus 8t plus 16. Then I do minus 16 equals 20. The 16s cancel out and I get back to where I was. So that's perfectly acceptable to write this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this 20 over this side because often when we solve quadratics, we want it to be equal to 0. If we can factorize it, then we get use our null factor theorem to say one of these things must be 0. So I'm going to say t plus 4 all squared minus 36 equals 0. Now I could say that that is t plus 4 all squared minus 6 squared equals 0 because you know what that is? Now it doesn't always work out that neatly, that's a very neat result. I've got a square here, right, t plus 4 is squared. I've got another square here that's being subtracted. This is like a squared minus b squared which is of course a plus b a minus b. So t plus 4, that's my a, plus b, plus 6. a minus b, t plus 4, minus 6, equals 0. So that means that t plus 10, this factorizes to t plus 10, t minus 2, equals 0. So t equals negative 10, or t equals positive 2. That's what makes one of those factors equal to zero. So there we go, that's solving by completing the square. Of course, we could solve that. That's such a neat answer. We could solve that by factorizing. We could certainly solve that using the quadratic formula. Okay, but we've done it by completing the square, right? We express this as a squared term somewhere along the way. Now this one over here, this doesn't work out nearly as neatly because when we get to this stage here, I don't get a lovely square number, so I have to write it as a third. 
Nah, it's not as nice. Right, so we're going to approach this a different way. Right, what I'm going to do here, this is the same as x half this minus a half. x minus a half all squared. Now that would introduce a quarter, so I need to take a quarter away. Already got a minus one there, equals zero. So I've got x minus a half all squared. Right, I'm going to send these over the other side, or I'm going to add them to both sides. Equals five over four. Right, equals 5 over 4. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So, square root of this is x minus a half. What's the square root of 5 over 4? Nothing terribly neat and tidy, but don't forget it is plus or minus because I can have a negative. Uh, I'm going to say, can I actually be tricky and say that's root 5 over 2 because the square root of 4 is 2? That's okay. So, then x equals, I'm going to add a half to each side, I get a half plus root 5 over 2. Or what happens if that was a minus instead? That would be x equals 1 half minus root 5 over 2. Uh, these have a common denominator and maybe we can combine them, but... Mm, yeah, no, I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, that's completing the square. That is solving equations by completing the square. Typically, you won't do it unless it says do this by completing the square, right? As it's done here, it says do it by completing the square. There are two different methods there. They have their pros and cons. They have their pros and cons. Sometimes one of them works better than the other. Certainly, either of those methods are very acceptable when you're asked to use this method. Um, and from experience, more often than not, where this is actually useful, right, where you're actually using this to solve another problem, not using a specific method to solve a problem that you could do a different way, where this is particularly useful is probably when you get to this stage here, right? This has interesting applications, interesting value in some other maths problems that we'll learn about in the next two years. Okay, check those things out. Sorry, we won't be there for class. Um, but practice the questions. See you uh, Monday.